What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I am Sid the Nerdy Mark and today I have your review of NXT and 205 Live. Now before we begin, really quick couple of announcements. First things first, it is of course the go home show for TakeOver War Games and Survivor Series respectively for both shows. So because of that, I am actually going to be doing my who should win versus who will win at TakeOver War Games and Survivor Series with armbar audio this saturday i am doing a live stream along with them on their channel they're going to be talking war games and survivor series as well as chris jericho cruz along with a special guest um, myself and another special guest will be there so that's going to be a lot of fun i can't wait i'll leave a link to their channel in the description below or maybe a, you can click the eye above my head wherever it is here here wherever to subscribe to their channel because well you should yeah, there's a great channel and also you will be notified when they go live so uh, make sure you do that because of that I will give my short predictions on takeover war games and the uh, cruiserweight title match uh, at Survivor Series at the end instead of my matches of the night which I'll just basically say this was match of the night for me as I talk about that match of course the matches of the night will be in the description below as well with that being said let's dive right in to our WWE Network shows starting with NXT NXT began with women's action, the EST of NXT, Bianca Belair taking on the Blasian baddie, the newcomer Mia Yim in a really good match. Early on, Mia Yim does take Bianca Belair to Dropkick City, hitting her with four whopping drop kicks or a whopping four drop kicks whatever really showing the potential that mia yim has um carrying bianca belair to a good match belair obviously being built up as a possible contender for the nxt women's title which i would love to see around her waist i personally would love to see uh, Bianca Belair versus Shayna Baszler, but uh, I think that they do have other plans for Baszler, so um, I'll talk about that during my predictions. The match did end when Mia Yim tried to go for her finisher, which I forget what it's called, and that is of course converted into a KOD by Bianca Belair, and she of course wins the match, continuing her undefeated streak. Mia Yim still looks good in defeat. See, that's the thing, NXT is able to still make they're the the loser of the match look good somehow i don't understand why the main roster isn't able to do that up next we did get another women's match we had the lady of nxt lacey evans taking on carissa rivera pretty short match uh rivera did get some offense in but it was evans through and through she finally did hit the women's right to win this match and she of course cut a promo saying that she's the lady of NXT and she's the best thing in the world and whatnot and that she's going to carry this division looks like she's also being built up as a potential contender for the NXT women's title so Bel Air versus Lacey Evans this is a match that I really want to see and I think Evans should definitely uh, be the one who ends uh, Bianca Belair's undefeated streak. I would love to see that. So before we get into the main event of NXT, I do want to talk about a couple of promos and an interview that we had. We did have a couple of hype packages, one for the uh, NXT title match between uh, the champion Tommaso Ciampa and the challenger, the Velveteen Dream. Good hype package. I like this one. They also played a hype package for Aleister Black versus Johnny Gargano. Um, that should be interesting. I'm wondering if Gargano is going to get new theme music as he is more or less a heel. You know, he is a bad guy. And I think he's actually a really good heel because the best villains are always the ones that think that they're doing the right thing. We also all got an interview, as I mentioned, with Matt Riddle, the king of bros. And he basically said that he killed it in his debut match. His words, not mine. He was interrupted by Cassius Ono, who challenged him to a match, which they will have the next week. A lot of people were kind of angry that this match wasn't on TakeOver War Games. Personally, I'm okay with that because Matt Riddle just came to NXT. I think he needs to get a few more matches on the show first before he gets on a TakeOver card. I'm sure it's going to happen in the future. Probably the TakeOver before the Rumble. I'm okay with Matt Riddle not being featured on the card. And plus, War Games is a pretty long match anyway. So that makes perfect sense. They need time for uh, to let that match breathe. It is now time for our main event. 
Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era taking on Hansen of the War Raiders. And the winner of this match gets the advantage in the War Games main event. So this was a chaotic match as you might have expected. Kyle O'Reilly basically tried to chop down the big oak tree that is Hansen. And Hansen combining his powerhouse moves with some agility as well. So that was good stuff. I really, really enjoyed that. Hansen did try to go to the top rope. Adam Cole distracted him. Out came his brother, Roe, in the War Raiders. Out came the Undisputed Era to uh, even out the even out the odds. Out came Ricochet and Pete Dunne to help out. But this all distracted Hansen a little bit and Kyle O'Reilly did finally pick up the win. So the Undisputed Era do have the advantage going into TakeOver War Games. This is interesting, I really liked it. This was match of the night for me for NXT. But for now, let's move on to 205 Live. 205 Live did begin with a tag team match. Drew Gulak and Gentleman Jack Gallagher taking on Akira Tozawa and the Brian Kendrick in a really fun tag team match. The whole story going on here was, will Brian Kendrick and Tozawa be able to ex coexist because of their history? And also the fact that uh, Brian Kendrick did want a piece of Drew Gulak as he has already beaten his cohort gentleman, Jack Gallagher. So this was good stuff. I liked pretty much everything in this match. The match did end when Akira Tozawa did have Gulak in an octopus hold. Gallagher tried to interfere. Craig Kendrick tried to block the interference, but Gallagher did push uh, Kendrick onto Gulak and Tozawa, causing a miscommunication and allowing Gulak to get the roll up win over Akira Tozawa. So there's some tension brewing between uh, Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa. They hopefully can work it out by the time that they have to face these two again, because I'm pretty sure they will pace them once more so we'll see what happens when they do next up we did have Kalisto and Lince Dorado taking on a pair of local talent and they easily dispose of them but that's not the main story the main story is that Maria Canellas appears on the Titantron she congratulates uh, Lucha House Party on their win she says that they have she has a master plan which includes the Lucha House Party and TJP and her husband Mike Canellas now she's not going to execute it yet because she wants all three members of Lucha House Party to be present when her master plan is executed. So next week, Grand Meta League will be back and he will take on TJP. And this should be interesting. I'm looking forward to see what uh, Mrs. Canellas has cooked up for the Lucha House Party. So we did have a couple of segments. We did have the weigh in between Mustafa Ali and the Cruiserweight Champion Buddy Murphy. Uh, at that weigh-in, there was a bit of a brawl that broke out. And uh, later on, we did have Dasha Fuentes standing by with Buddy Murphy, who said that he just was reminding Mustafa Ali what he's fighting for and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, this was cool. Good promo. I think Buddy Murphy is really coming around uh, as a, a douchey heel, and it, that's great. But he also can get the job done, so I love that. And we did have a promo, like one of those cell phone promos, from Mustafa Ali, and this was at the end of the show, which is, in my opinion, a very peculiar way to end out 205 Live, but whatever. Um, it was very impassioned, it was very good. Uh, Mustafa Ali does a good job with the promo, so really exciting build to their match at Survivor Series. It is now time for our main event, Cedric Alexander taking on the man of the hour, the 24-year-old piece of gold, Leo Rush, and what a great match this was. Match of the night for 205 Live for me. Leo Rush, I gotta tell you, I do not want to be involved in a game of tag with that man because I wish I had his agility when I was a kid. I would have never gotten tagged. I would have never been the first person that they went after in elementary school when we all used to play tag. Um, Hello darkness, my old friend. This was a fun match. It was really good. Leo Rush um, doing what he has to do to evade Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander trying to prove himself that he's not a pushover and whatnot. You have to go watch this match. I really, I highly recommend you go check this one out because um, it was really, really good. The match ended when Leo Rush tried to go for the final hour, but Alexander escaped. 
hit a Spanish fly, then hit the lumbar check onto Leo Rush, and then one ending Leo Rush's streak. So that was kind of interesting that uh, we had Cedric Alexander end the streak of Leo Rush. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, it's good storytelling that, oh, he's on the right path and that the, the announcers really put that over and whatnot that, you know, Alexander is heading on the right path and he's gonna get a rematch sooner than later um, if he goes down this road. So I guess, yeah, ending Leo Rush's streak was a very, was a, supposed to be a good start and his kind of road to redemption. So as I mentioned in the top of this video, I am gonna give you my quick thoughts and predictions on who should win and who will win at TakeOver War Games, as well as the Cruiserweight title match at Survivor Series. So, starting off with uh, TakeOver, the first match I wanna talk about, Johnny Gargano taking on Aleister Black. I think it should be Aleister Black, and it will be Aleister Black. As far as the NXT Championship match goes, I think it should be Velveteen Dream because he's deserved it. However, I do feel like it's gonna be Tommaso Ciampa. As far as the NXT Women's match goes, I think it should be Kylie Sane. I have a feeling that it will be Kylie Sane. And of course, in the main event of War Games, the Undisputed era taking on war raiders ricochet and pete dunn i feel like raiders ricochet and dunn should take the victory however i do feel like they're going to give the victory to undisputed era as far as the cruiserweight title match goes i do feel like it should be buddy murphy who retains his cruiserweight championship however i do feel like they're going to give it to mustafa ali as he has been scratching and clawing his way up and i get i can kind of understand why but yeah those are my quick thoughts i will talk about it in more detail this saturday so that pretty much concludes my review of nxt 20 and 205 live along with my quick thoughts on war games and survivor series let me know what you guys think about both shows in the comment section below also be sure to let me know who do you think should and will win at war games and survivor series leave all that in the comment section below and if, as always don't forget to like share and subscribe follow me on social media and tell your friends about the nerdy mark Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. This is Sid signing off. You guys take care. Bye-bye.